we're not doing away with a mandatory death penalty. We are doing away with it in two specific situations. Uh, of course, we thought long and hard about it. And you know, we have had calls for doing away with it for a very long time and we continuously review it. We take those calls seriously, but we have to look at uh, what is in the best interest of the people as a whole. And uh, for, we did away with it for Korea's mandatory death penalty. If they are in a position to uh, help us uh, identify and uh, go after people higher up in the drug uh, distribution hierarchy. I, you know, the law sets out a number of conditions. I'm trying to summarize it. So that is actually to help us better enforce because the drug situation worldwide is moving against us. We have mandatory death penalty for a variety of other offenses still. Yeah. Firearms. Firearms and drugs as well. If you look at our homicides, the rationale is different. The rate, uh, homicide rate is 0 0.3 per 100,000 of population. So it's very low. We think that uh, given the low rate, we can afford to take the risk and society can afford to move. <laughs> no, it's not, uh, it's not focused on that. What, okay. you, you see, no country wants to send anyone to death, right? What you want is a civilized system of um, criminal justice, but which also uh, protects society. Why do we have the death penalty? For a variety of reasons. One, of course, is the deterrence. In that because it's a serious penalty, a lot of people will think twice before they commit the crimes that attract the death penalty. But second, uh, it is, if you ask Singaporeans, a lot of them, a significant majority, support the death penalty. So this is not designed to say, uh, oh, we want to send less people or we want to send more people. Nobody wants to send more people. Nobody, nobody wants to send anyone to death penalty. I don't think it's anything that's specific to me. I don't think it makes me out as anything special. I'm fortunate enough to be in a position where I can uh, say these things and a few more people take notice of what I say. <laughs> I got involved with these causes because I felt that as a society, you know, it says something about us. If we can treat uh, you know, animals which really are in Tamil, we say uh, they are souls which can't speak, you know, or living beings which can't speak. They can't take care of themselves. We are in a position to inflict so much pain or do so much good for them. And surely we should have a system, rules, structure to make sure that people don't abuse animals. I believe so. I think uh, it's undoubtedly uh, what makes you think that human beings can treat animals whichever way you want. They have feelings. They have a right to live. Can you go and be cruel, uh, do what you like? Is that anyway consistent with the finer aspects of human behavior? Is that civilized behavior? Why shouldn't we protect our animals?